Friends, my name is Henrik Kuto, your host and narrator, and thank you so much for joining me for another weekly edition of some spookies to get you, um, well, to get you through your quarantine, to get you through the non-Halloween months, really to get you through whatever you need. We like to be a cure-all. If you love the spooky, we're here for you every single week. And this week is no different. We got a pretty fun, if not very, very tense story for you this week. Because, you know, one of the things that um, most of us are not experiencing at all right now due to the current uh, pandemic, lockdowns, etc., etc., is we're not really meeting new people. Which is kind of a bummer. I'm a very uh, social guy. But I'm not meeting anybody new right now. I'm pretty much just at home. Like most people, uh, or, you know, at the grocery store. Uh, and it's hard to really share a friendly smile with somebody when they're wearing a mask. So, you know, I do miss that. I miss that social element. I miss meeting new people. I miss going on adventures with said new people, but sometimes making new friends and, uh, you know, having social get togethers might not be such a great idea. Especially when the people you're meeting may not be particularly, uh, I don't even want to say not particularly kind, uh, might be, you know, particularly heavily sadistic, sociopathic, uh, criminal, and maybe murderous. And that's what we have for you this week. Uh, a story about a, uh, a very nice dinner between some not so nice people. So let's get to the story, let's listen to it, have a good time with it, and I'll be back afterward to chat with you. But for now, let's listen together. The Dinner Guests by Shane Migliavaca Orville Trench admired his reflection in the car window. He missed his long black ponytail and beard. His hair was cut short now. He ran a hand over his smooth chin. He'd had that beard so long, it was like cutting off a limb. But it had to go. It was time to get a new car, too. The old one would be drawing too much attention soon. Cherry Kowalski, the love of his life, appeared in the reflection. Her eyes were large, piercing, and dark. Dark to match her long, wild black hair, streaked with purple and green, that hung to her shoulders. She twirled one of the long strands of hair around her index finger. Hanging around her neck was a simple silver necklace. A small plastic baby arm dangled from it. You look good, she said. I didn't ask. Fuck you, she laughed loudly, giving her lover double middle fingers. Orville spun around, grabbing her by the shoulders. His eyes narrowed. Oh yes. Yes indeed. He scanned the parking lot of the convenience store. There were only three cars here. An old pickup truck, a rusting black Camaro, and a fairly new SUV. Not much to pick from. Shouldn't be that many people inside. He looked at the sign over the door. It read, Quick Save Mart. It would be quick, all right. He couldn't wait to get out of East Fuckwit, New York. Orville touched the cold steel under his jacket. A Colt Trooper MK3, like the sheriff carried in Walking Tall, the 70s one. He loved that film. Not that shit remake with that Nancy Boy wrestler. It hung from a shoulder holster under his jacket. A flaming devil face was emblazoned across the jacket's back. Just as he expected, the door had a little bell that chimed when it opened. He sized up the store. Orville liked to think of himself as a hunter, though what he hunted, you didn't buy a license for. The store was typical. Five aisles of various overpriced crap cold drinks in the back, and some not-so-fresh-looking coffee. 
The kid behind the counter, who couldn't be older than 20, didn't even look up from his cell phone when they entered. He was dressed to the nines in M&M cast-offs. Another white boy wannabe. He'd be easy enough. Picking through the beer was a bear of a man. Dirty coveralls, baseball cap, and a long graying beard. Had to be the pickup driver. This one could be trouble. He'd be the first. The last customer was a young woman. Mid-twenties. Two in the afternoon and she's wearing fucking pajamas. Orville shakes his head. Too bad for her. She wasn't his type. Anything look good for you, hun? He asks Cherry. Slim Pickens. The big man came up to the counter, carrying two six-packs. He set them on the counter. It took a couple seconds before the kid looked up from his phone. That all, Mr. Scott? The kid asked. For now. You know that damned phone gonna turn you into a zombie, Jimmy. All you kids just stare at him all the time, sucking your minds out. Not just kids doing it. Seen plenty of adults, too. Scott opens his wallet. Goddamn right about that. The wife is always doing that Facebook shit. Why you think I got these for tonight? The two have a laugh. Cherry makes a mock vomiting face to Orville. Orville mouths, which one? Cherry nods towards large Mr. Scott. Gonna start off Friday night right, Scott says. Cherry slides up next to him. She leans against the counter, showing Jimmy her cleavage. His eyes go right to it. How's about speeding up all the talky-talky, she says. Excuse me, young lady, Scott says. No need to be fucking rude. Orville stood next to the coffee pot watching Cherry do her thing. He poured himself a cup, dropping in a ton of creamer and sugar, gulping down the cup in one go. I just want to make a purchase and go, not listen to your fucking life story, she says, noticing she's not even holding anything. Cherry quickly grabs a handful of Slim Jims. These delicious treats, yum yum. Scott shakes his head and turns back to Jimmy. What do I owe you? Orville lets his eye flicker over the female shopper. She'd selected some chips and now stood in front of the soda cooler, oblivious to the fun up front. Scott paid Jimmy and turned to leave, picking up his beer. Cherry blocked his way. Excuse me, miss. No, no, you don't get to leave until you apologize, Cherry stomped her booted foot hard on the floor. Just get out of my way, crazy bitch, he tried to push past her. Angry, Cherry clawed him, opening red trenches on the left side of his face. Bitch! Scott dropped both of his six-packs to the floor with a crash. Some of the cans exploded in a foamy blast. He made an unsuccessful grab at Cherry. (laughs) Too slow, she laughed. Scott lunged at Cherry only to come face to face with Orville's Colt Trooper. Orville smiled, a wicked smile, as he pulled the hammer back. Hands off my girl. He pulled the trigger, sending Scott's brains all over the newspaper rack. Scott fell to the ground, twitching. Lying on his back, Orville fired a couple more shots into the dying man's chest. He saw Jimmy behind the counter, his face slack with dull horror. Orville pointed the colt at him. Stay planted right there, zit boy. You move, you die. The boy nodded. Shit, Ori, he was mine, Cherry pouts. And you took too long. The female shopper screamed at the top of her lungs and bolted. Orville sighs. Get her. Cherry let out a blood-curdling scream and pursued her prey. Cherry grabbed cans from one of the shelves and hurled them at the woman. Where you going, baby? A can hit one of the glass coolers, cracking it. Another one hit the woman's leg. She fell against a display of dog biscuits, knocking it over with a loud crash. Cherry picked up a loaf of bread and beat the woman with it. Give up, she laughed, pulling the woman up by her hair. Orville watches the sad spectacle, laughing. Out of the corner of his eye, Jimmy inches towards his phone on the back counter. Don't even think about it, white chocolate. Cherry marched the pajama-clad shopper up to the counter. Upon seeing Scott lying on the ground in a pool of blood, the captive started to sob. Oh God, don't hurt me! Orville looked at the woman. Don't worry. Nobody's getting hurt as long as you give us a little ride. A glint of metal caught his eye. Too late, 
He saw Jimmy aiming a cheap pistol at him. The nervous boy squeezed the trigger, trying to fire one-handed. The pistol fired wild. The bullet whizzed past Orville and hit the female shopper in the throat. Orville took aim with the colt and blasted Jimmy between the eyes. The boy slumped dead against a display of lotto tickets. Damn, Orville says. That was something. Orville looked over at the side of the counter at Jimmy. What brains he had leaking out of the wound above his eyes. Orville shot him again. You get to have all the fun, Cherry pouts. He holsters the colt. Get some supplies for the road. Orville walked over to the body of the woman. He crouched down and turned her on her back. She stares up at him with lifeless eyes. He rummages through her pajama pockets and pulls out a pair of keys. He was about to stand when a bell dinged as a car pulled up to one of the pumps. He looked back at Cherry filling up a plastic bag with groceries. Get down, he hissed. We've got company. Orville peeked around an end cap of beef jerky. It was hard to make out the car or the driver since they were on the other side of the gas pumps, but he thought he saw a glimpse of long blonde hair. All the while Orville kept his eyes on the new arrival, they stepped from behind the pump. He was right. It was a girl, about 18, long blonde hair, longer legs. Instantly, Orville felt his crotch come alive. God damn, he wanted to fuck her on the spot. This called for a change of plans. He'd planned on taking the woman in pajamas hostage, having her drive them somewhere secluded and lie low. But White Chocolate got trigger happy and fucked that up. So he'd settle for just taking her car and some supplies and hightailing it. But now Blondie had dropped into their laps, and if he was lucky, she'd be riding it later tonight. After he was done, Cherry could have a go. She'd like that. Orville licked his lips at the thought. From behind the counter, another urgent beep as the blonde pressed a button on the pump. Finally giving up, she walked frustrated towards the store. Here we go, Orville whispered. The blonde pulled the door open, making the bell chime as she unknowingly stepped into hell. Jimmy, you awake in here? She asked a second before seeing the blood. Jimmy? Nope, Orville stood. The colt pointed at her. Jimmy's on break. Blood, the girl said, biting her lip. Did you? Sure did, Cherry said, as she walked towards them carrying an overstuffed bag of groceries. How sweet. Fresh meat. She's also going to be our ride out of here. Ain't you, baby? The girl looked down at the bodies, then up at Orville and Cherry, dumbstruck. Right? Orville said, a bit annoyed. He took the blonde's chin with his hand and forced the girl to nod in agreement. Right. He took his hand away, leaving bloody fingerprints. Who are you? The girl asked, her voice quivering. I'm a demon, Orville answered. Straight from hell. I eat up little girls like you. You're going to kill me. Depends. What's your name, sweetness? Lauren. Lauren Doler. Well, Lauren, where were you headed this fine afternoon? The girl took a deep breath. To my parents for dinner. To her parents for dinner, Cherry mocked. And where do said parents live? You don't want to go there, please. I'll take you anywhere else. Orville snapped his fingers. Where do they live? I don't want anybody to get hurt, she offered up. Orville snapped his fingers again. Where? Defeated, she sighed. Outside Hillbury, on Old Gorge Road. Sounds homey. Just the folks there, sweet pea? Yes, only child. He grabbed her ass. Great, let's mount up. Road trip, Cherry said, doing a little dance. Lauren looked down at the dead bodies. You're just gonna leave them there? Like that? Cherry looked down at the bodies. They're dead, honey. They ain't got anything to worry about. Now move your ass. They filled up the gas tank of Lauren's Chevrolet hatchback and loaded up the back with several bags of groceries. Orville had formulated a new plan. They'd go to the parents' house, maybe spend a day or two laying low. This massacre would be all over the news. He could take the time to have some fun with Lauren. 
Orville looked over the car. We're all set, sweet pea. You know the way. You drive. Shotgun, Cherry shouted. Sorry, hun. I gotta keep an eye on our driver. You'll have to ride in the back seat. Oh, fuck, Cherry kicked the car tire. I never get shotgun. Orville slid into the passenger's side and glanced at the blonde. She had her blood-stained fingers near her mouth. Did she just lick the blood? No, no, couldn't be. Just a trick his eyes played on him. Orville watched the trees on both sides of the road pass by. Their branches stretched out towards him like skeletal arms. It wasn't fall yet, but all the trees had lost their leaves. What's with the trees? he asked out loud to nobody in particular. Lauren, who was focused on the road, answered him. That's because of the original Hillberry. There was a chemical spill back in the 80s. Shit, really? Cherry said, poking her head in from the back seat. This spooked Lauren, whose hand slipped on the wheel. Easy there, girl, Orville said. He slipped his hand to Lauren's bare leg, running his hand up under her skirt. Can't have you crashing. Cherry slapped Orville on the shoulder. Lay off. Let her tell the story. Orville's hand moved away from Lauren's leg, allowing her to pull her skirt back down. There's no real story. Just some company spilled a bunch of chemicals near the town, killed all the trees and grass, poisoned the water. A few people got sick. All the townsfolks moved to New Hillbury. She pointed past Orville. You can see part of the old town there, through the trees there. Orville and Cherry turned. As the dead trees flew by, a few dilapidated houses could be seen, weathered, abandoned, and forgotten to time. Your parents live all the way out here? It'll be much easier that way, away from prying eyes. Orville smiled at this thought. No need to worry about all the screaming. My parents like it out in the country away from the hustle and bustle. They're, they're a little old-fashioned. Orville let his eyes wander to the girl's chest. Her tits were nicely sized. He got hard as thoughts of burying his face in them ran through his mind. Not you, though, huh? You like the tight, tight, cramped modern world. That's a hell of a commute for Daddy, Cherry piped in. Cherry knew what he was thinking, and it pissed her off. He could tell. Dad kind of works from home. Lucky him, Orville said. He looked at the sky growing dark as the evening crept in. The car sank into quiet as Orville turned his thoughts to what had to be done. The parents shouldn't be too hard to control, especially since he had the girl and the gun. Besides, in a day or two, the happy family would be dead as dog shit. Orville looked at the girl, seeing her as yet another decayed corpse left in his wake. Too much quiet, Cherry barked from the back seat. Turn on some tunes, Ori. Good idea, he said. He turned on the radio, cycling through the channels. Most of it was static. The first actual station he got was a religious one. A woman was preaching, screaming the words in a frenzy, Exodus 4.25, you are indeed a bridegroom of blood to me. The woman's voice was raw, like her throat was bloody. Ah, nope, Cherry interjected from the back seat. The next station he found was a pop station. Dubstep strained the car's speakers. Hell fucking no! The next station, Kenny G, was playing his heart out. Crap. Next. Orville switched it again. Black Sabbath's paranoid assaulted their eardrums. Hell yeah! Cherry squealed. It was dark before they got to the house. Lauren drove without the headlights on until Orville said something. She was so nervous she must have forgot to turn them on. I can take you anywhere, she pleaded. Please, just don't involve my parents. Really, I'm sorry, sweetness, but no. Even if he somehow took pity on her, it was too late now anyway. On the left side of the road, a large house loomed, lights burning quaintly in the windows. This had to be the place. It was the first man-made structure they'd seen in miles. Lauren pulled off the road down on a long dirt driveway. Off to the house's right, a large walled-in cemetery loomed, its stone walls, ancient and crumbling. Whoa, creepy, Cherry said, pressing her face to the window. A graveyard? Your parents live next to a fucking graveyard? 
Orville asked. Dad's the caretaker, Lauren answered, as she pulled up to the house. When the town moved, the cemetery stayed. They still bury people from the new town here. They got out of the car. Orville glanced up at the house. It looked old, but in pretty good condition. Daddy probably had a lot of time on his hands to keep the place nice. Won't Mom and Dad be surprised, Cherry said, doing a little skip. Lead the way, Princess. Orville reached into his jacket and pulled out an old switchblade. He held the blade to Lauren's side. Don't think of being a hero. This old girl is Sally. Killed my first dog with her. She'll gut you all the same. Understand? Yes. Good. Let's go meet the folks. Lauren pushed open the door, Orville right behind her. The house looked homey, he thought. Would be a shame to make a mess of it. Mom? Dad? I'm here! Orville could hear a TV playing in one of the rooms. The smell of something good cooking hung in the air. A middle-aged couple stepped into the room. Their looks of joy turned to questioning looks upon seeing their guests. Honey? Who are these people? The mother asked. The father looked at Orville the recognition visible on his face. Look who's come to dinner, Daddy dear, Orville says. Behave, he flashes the colt in its holster. Oh, God, Mom stammered. What do you want? Some grub would be cool. They're the ones on the news. Serial killers, Lauren's father said. Has our little rest stop made a splash already? Orville said, putting his arm around Lauren. He could see the father's face light up with anger, and then helplessness. This thrilled Orville to no end. Orville might have to make Daddy watch as he fucked the girl's brains out. Why don't we mosey into the dining room and eat? Mom and Dad led the way as Orville walked with Lauren, Cherry following behind. What are we having, Mom? Orville asked. Roast, but... It's still in the oven, she answered, looking nervously at her husband. I should get it. Cherry, why don't you help Mom get the food? Orville winked at the mother. I'll entertain Pops. Cherry frowned. Come on, you old bat, she took the woman roughly by the arm. Where's the kitchen? Orville pulled Lauren tight to him. He took a whiff of her hair and skin. Your daughter smells great, Daddy. Ever have a piece? He could see the hate burning in the man's eyes. Orville half wanted him to try something. He ran his hand roughly over Lauren's chest. Bet she tastes great, too. As he hoped, this was too much for Dad. Orville pushed Lauren out of the way and sent the girl sailing into a small stand. The father charged at Orville, swinging at him with his huge fist. Orville sidestepped the swing and grabbed the man by the throat. He slammed him down hard against a nearby table. The mother appeared in the doorway. Cherry right behind her. Get the fuck back in the kitchen, Cherry! Cherry did as she was told, pulling the woman back to the kitchen. Orville pulled out Sally and sliced a large gash across the man's right cheek. Bad dad. He took a quick glance at Lauren. Hey, princess, where's the basement? Lauren stood, unsure on her feet. Please don't hurt them. Just, just go. Not gonna happen. Basement now, or Daddy loses an eye. Lauren led them to the basement door and nervously opened it. What are you going to do? Lauren pleaded. Orville dragged her old man to the stairs. All Orville could see were some old wood stairs descending into darkness. Can you fly, Daddy? Orville took the man by the collar and threw him down the stairs. Lauren screamed her guts out as her father was swallowed up by the darkness. Orville thought he heard the sound of bones breaking as the man hit bottom. He looked at Lauren, tears streamed down her cheeks. It's possible he survived. Maybe, she sobbed. Why? Orville licked his lips. You don't want Mom to get the treatment, do you? No. Good. You'll do what I say then. She nodded. Here's what I want. He knew she'd still have a room here. The kid moves out, but the folks always keep the room untouched. Stuffed animals sat on the bed, silent judgment on their furry faces. Orville turned on the radio on the girl's dresser. 
Stevie B's Postman song was on. Not sexy, but Orville didn't want to wait anymore. He pushed the stuffed animals off the bed, scattering them to the floor. He hopped on the old bed, its springs creaking in protest. Okay, sweet pea. Showtime. Strip. Lauren gulped. Cherry watched the mom trying to prepare dinner like all hell hadn't just broke loose in the other room a few minutes ago. She had to hand it to the old bat. She could keep it under control. It had grown quiet now. What could be going on? Cherry thought. Before she investigated that, the smell of the roast caught her limited attention span fully. Cherry stabbed a big slice of it with her knife and took a large bite, sending juices dribbling down her chin. So good, Mommy, she said. I think I just came in my panties. The woman didn't answer. She cut off a slice to replace the one Cherry took. Beef or pork, Cherry asks. I can't nail the taste. Putting down the carving knife, Mother cleaned off her hands with a towel. Pork. It's damn good, Mom. Why do you do it? Hurt people. Cherry thought for a moment. Because it's something to do. Lauren stood in her bra and panties, nervously trying to emulate a sexy dance. Orville watched. It was time. He could wait no longer. Come here. She walked toward him, her face pale white. Orville was a little bit disappointed in her choice of plain pink panties and bra. He'd hoped they'd be something a little more exciting, or at least funny. Lauren sat down next to him, her body shaking. Undo my pants. Cherry was getting a little nervous. Where was Ori? She didn't hear anything out in the dining room. Maybe Orville was getting rid of the dad. She watched Mother as she washed the carving knife. When can we go out there? She asked. The food'll get cold. Just hold your horses. Don't you have any other food to get ready? It was weird. The whole time they were in the kitchen, she didn't see the woman prepare anything else. No vegetables. No potatoes. No stuffing. Nothing. Did they only eat meat? The meat had made her thirsty. Cherry walked over to the fridge. She could go for something cold. It was too much to hope these fucks had beer. She pulled open the fridge door. Sitting there, on a large plate, was a severed human arm with a rather large chunk cut out from it. Cherry suddenly felt very weak. Behind her came noises no human ear should ever hear. The sound of flesh and bone stretching, moving. She spun around. The woman looked different now, her skin grayish, her eyes black, long teeth protruded from her mouth, and her hands had become claws. We can't eat just any flesh, she growled. It has to be dead first, the father said, standing in the door. He was a little bloodied, but looking very much like his wife did now. The only thing between Orville and Lauren was his boxers and her underwear. He felt like a boy on Christmas morning. He told Lauren to pull down his boxers. They fell to the floor. Here, he took her head, lowering it toward his excited dick. He leaned his head back, looking up at the ceiling. The girl was pretty good at this. There was a gunshot somewhere downstairs, followed by Cherry screaming in horror. What the fuck? But it was already too late. In the next instant, pain sliced through him. He felt something warm splash his chest. He was almost too terrified to look down. His crotch was covered in warm, red blood. The small stump where his dick had been was busy pumping more out. As he started to slip into shock, he looked at Lauren, whose body was undergoing a horrible change. She spat blood from her mouth along with his severed manhood. I told you to leave us alone. Orville could hear the heavenly chorus calling him. They sounded like howling wolves. Mm -mm, nothing beats home cooking. Am I right, my friends? And uh, nothing beats a little lycanthropy uh, thrown in as a kind of... Um, we don't want to call it a monkey wrench. It gets a wolf wrench to some evil sadistic plans. And I want to say uh, thank you, Shane. He's been a, uh, a very regular contributor uh, to Weekly Spooky. His stories are so much fun. And this one, I felt, 
had tension pouring out of every orifice. So thank you so much for giving us a little uh, a little entertainment to distract us from the world around us. Speaking of the world around us, I hope everybody is doing all right. Uh, right now is a very weird time <laughs> to be or to be alive, you know. And um, we're all dealing with it the best we can. I've been isolating for about two months now, and uh, it's not always easy. But I will say one of the things that's helped a lot is doing this show every single week for you guys has been a lot, a lot of fun. It's good to have something to look forward to, something to uh, to embrace. And uh, I want to thank everybody who's supporting the show, which of course includes our lovely Patreon boosters, Kevin Fry, Jack Kerr, Karen Wiemet, Jason Limberg. I am Mr. Cheeseball Jerry Roth, Craig Cohen, and Rob Fields. I want to thank you guys so much, as well as all of our wonderful authors, uh, for keeping this show rocking and rolling. We haven't missed a week. Next week is our 30th episode. And if you love the show, if you want to support it in some way, big or small, please go to weeklyspooky.com and you can uh, join the Patreon. You can buy a t-shirt. You can leave a tip. You can just send an email and say something nice. All of that is highly appreciated and uh, gr- uh, gratefully accepted over here. But I am starting to ramble. I'm not going to lie. Being around people so little uh, <laughs> kind of affects my sociality. That isn't even a word. A little bit. So on behalf of our producer, Dan Wilder, our wonderful composer, Ray Mattis, and myself, we will catch you next week with some more spooky. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Make sure to find your way back next week. But for now... You are safe. Trust me. <laughs>